Hey guys, this is Tom from Fantasia Music and I'm so happy to finally share my second live composing tutorial with you. Today we will go with Albion 1 from Spitfire Audio. I'm really excited how it turns out. Let's go. Okay, first of all, let me tell you that I won't use any external effect on any instrument track. Uh, we will just go with the sound of Albion 1 and... Yeah, what I did so far is I already created a template for the orchestra section. That means we have already preloaded the individual articulations for the strings, for the brass, for the woodwinds and for the percussion. Uh, the only thing that I added is a piano patch from Cinematic Studio Piano, um, just because there is no piano uh, in Albion 1. That's why I chose this one. And what I also did, I already pre-selected a synth pad. We will start with this synth pad. And I did that because if you have a look on the synth pads, there are hundreds of them. And yeah, I didn't want to go through all of these patches with you because <laughs> I think it's better to write some music but I will show you uh, some patches observing aliens So there are really incredible, uh, there's an incredible number of patches. Um, that can create a great atmosphere. You just have to be careful uh, not to use it too much with your orchestral stuff, because otherwise it sounds unnatural. And I decided to go with the awesome pad because we want to create an awesome track. No, just kidding. Um, of course we want to create an awesome pad, but um, I just think this sound matches for our first chord progression. The only thing is that the release time is too long. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's let's make it a little bit less volume. Cause louder uh, your whole track gets louder automatically, so that's <laughs> what it always is. Um, so let's start a little bit quiet. Um, we can now use the chord pads of Cubase. That means if we click on we already have a great um, chord progression uh, and you can just click on the individual chords and see what sounds good for you. You can add any other chord that you want to have here as well and you of course you can change them, uh, you can put them an octave higher Or put them an octave down. So we will start with an A minor progression. Yeah, that's what we want. C. 
So let's see. Let's make them all a little bit longer. Ah, come on. As you can see, I have already set a pre-delay of 220 to this track because if you leave it like the usual point, it feels like the E, the e minor chord is not starting at 4 bar, it's starting l later. So you can see, you, you can just hear it when it's already here and that's why you have to use the pre-delay and then it works. Yeah, but what I want to do, I want to take one note out there because uh, it's too massive in that range and I want to have it a little bit more clear. Let's see. a little bit more yeah we can leave it like this for the moment next step will be some great percussion just a, a simple chord progression and we will use the Darwin Ensemble for this. That's really one of the pros of Albion 1. Uh, I really like the percussion. Let's start with a simple see I'm the perfect drum player but I have something in my head and I think it works with this and you can see uh, if you play them with another velocity it's a complete different sound Hmm. 
can put in two notes here. I think that's great. Make them a little bit shorter. Oh no. Those last notes are not good. Yes, yeah, something in this direction. Okay, this is simple and easy. We will take this. Okay, and now that we have like this drum set for four bars, we can automatically Make it longer by just clicking here and putting it to the right. Um, yeah. Okay, but I still have to adjust. Let's try like this. Okay, that sounds better. Um, now we can double it. <laughs> okay, and let's now go to the Easter Island drums. These are huge, low impact hits. You will hear it right now. So they are really, uh, really low and really powerful. Uh, you have to be careful with the low frequencies, <laughs> but I guess that's a problem that we have to deal with later. Okay, so let's uh, try. Okay, just simple and not too much. Yeah, I, I, will, I am trying to quantize them. Let's try it like this. And make the velocity a little bit. it for the moment like that and also repeat it so let me have a look if I am still recording yes that's good uh, you are still with me 
So, yeah, what can we do next? Um, I would like to add some uh, additional sound here in the Darwin percussion, like here from the higher frequencies. Let's try to uh, simulate uh, some sounds like shakers, orchestral shakers. Unfortunately, they are not in this library, but we can use something. Oh, come on. We're too hard. Yeah, something like this, but not so loud. It sounds like a shaker, if you know what I mean, like... And now we, um, I just adjust the velocity so that we have a louder beginning. We can do this even more. Yeah, something like this. And let's not uh, play it all the same uh, rhythm. So we will make some breaks and try to um, make it sound uh, yeah, uh, not that loop. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, it, it should not sound everything the same, so um, we just will make some changes to make it sound, yeah, more beautiful. Yeah, that sounds already pretty nice. Maybe one more. That sounds great. Yeah. But maybe the first note. It's velocity 56. It's only this one. 
and this one this this and this it's a bit too high that's how I really like it oh uh, I just deleted uh, <laughs> the second part because uh, I didn't see anything but of course we already have some drums down there so we just copy this okay and all together with the Easter Island low drum hit Let's bring in a bit of variation. That is the word that I was missing uh, two minutes ago. Uh, yes, I think that uh, every second low and boom can be a little bit quieter. Okay, let's save this for the moment. And I guess right now we can bring in something like a main melody. Let's take the brass legato patch for this. Okay, I think for the main part we have to half those chord progressions. Somehow they are too long to play a nice melody. Yeah, I think uh, it's enough if they are like half of the length. Let's shorten them all. And let's repeat this progression after this. Yeah, that sounds better. We can can make it a little bit oops, faster. Mm. Okay, let's play something. Now there's the um, this is the difference between a long notes and legato notes. If you just listen to this if, uh, sound when they do not overlap the notes, it sounds like it sounds not good. And if you let them overlap. And of 
course we have to leave like room and space uh, that it sounds more natural like a usual uh, brass player he would uh, need some time to breathe um, so what I wanted to tell is uh, if you take a legato patch you always have to overlap the notes because um, legato means that you have those transitions between the notes um, otherwise you could also take the the long notes um, but we want to have a legato line here so let's overlap these two Can you hear it? We have the same problem as with the strings, uh, the synth pads. They are not on time. We need some pre delay here. pretty on time okay let's add some strings now um, I prefer to go for the long articulations that means we don't have legato And you can hear also hear the reverb it's pretty nice I think I think we leave the reverb here like this and I try to play a different uh, line uh, something different than the, than the main melody here Let's try to already use the mod wheel and the expression for this one. leave the brass away come on hello okay
Okay, now I extract those automation data again to separate channels under the instrument line. And now they are completely the same. Let's make some fine adjustments here. Let's listen in context with the brass. we can leave a little bit higher and not so many changes So leave them overlap a little bit. It's no legato patch. That means we don't have like uh, real transitions between the notes, but somehow it sounds more natural anyway to overlap them here. Uh, now a little bit of fine adjustments. Okay, let's try to put this a little bit more down. It's a little bit too late. Let's try minus 30, for example. Yeah, minus 35 probably, but the beginning is a bit too loud. Start a bit more soft here. Yeah, maybe like this. I think we can leave it for the moment like this. Um, as you can see, there is one more slider, the vibrato slider. I left it completely on top. Uh, the reason is because it sounds better and more natural. You can listen. So in this uh, in this situation, I think the vibrato is good to have it here. 
So we will leave it for now. Let's try to add um, one more synth pad uh, for the lower frequencies. I think we need one more. Patch to beauty strings. Big strings. Oh, that sounds huge. That's exactly what I wanted. Let's try this. That sounds pretty cool. Let's oops, quantize this. That sounds pretty cool, but I think they these notes should be in the same uh, velocity. So let's try 44 for the moment. Just have a listen without those low strings. the pre-delay point here we have to make them start a little bit earlier Maybe a little turn down a little bit the volume. Okay, and we uh, we can name this uh, low pad. So let's see what we have. We have like drums, a little melody. <laughs> idea for the melody. <laughs>
Let's work with this. What sounds better here? Hmm. Maybe shorter. listen to the whole thing just discovered that our Darwin ensemble doesn't contain these images. Okay, we will leave the melody for the moment like this and save the whole project. Now we will add um, some brass in the mid ranges. Uh, we have that legato line. Uh, playing the the main melody, but in the mid section we until now we just hear that synth pad So let's try those mid longs Maybe with half of the dynamic range, so I turn down the mod wheel like... So you can hear, uh, now it's really, it's just a soft sound, not that uh, massive. Uh, that's what I want for here. And let's open the chord menu again and we will put in our chords yeah
Let's try to hear it. Okay, so I think that matches pretty good. Maybe with a little bit of reverb. Let's try. Okay, that's way too much. Let's try it with half of the reverb. A little bit less, maybe. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. And now I would like to show you something that um, my friend Fabian uh, just um, wrote in the comments um, on my first Jaeger composing tutorial um, and I really use it a lot right now so thanks Fabian for the for the great tip um, it is possible that you don't quantize your notes all on the same bar so that everything sounds like a machine you can choose something here I already saved it as 116 let's open this no just a moment open quantize panel that's it yeah here you can create your own quantize um, system and I created one with 12 ticks you can even go with more but I for me personally I, I really like 12 ticks maybe I will go with more someday but for now it's okay and you can save it here as a new preset so then you will see it in that menu so that means if I quantize these notes with this selection here um, okay let's just do one more thing yeah let's let's make one unit for all of these so I can show you uh, I can easily better show you what happens here if you just mark everything and press the quantize menu you see there's a difference and it's just random if I press Q again I can show you if I zoom in more he always does a random quantization um, and that's pretty cool because it gives the whole um, track some natural sounding because if you have an orchestra a full orchestra um, you won't hear every player starting exactly at the same second so this is a great um, possibility to not be totally on time but anyway he's quantizing it and sometimes there could even be more differences so maybe we should go higher but for now let's leave it with 12 so that means you see it doesn't start at the same the same second but that's exactly what we want and let's make them longer anyway so that it sounds like
you have to be careful if a note is in the same line it uh, must never reach the other note otherwise he won't play this note so just make it a little bit shorter like we did here I think we also need we need to um, let them start a few milliseconds earlier Okay, that sounds pretty nice. Yeah, let's leave the mid brass like this. Um, so next we can bring a little bit of, um, let's say, um, some, yes, we are still recording, so everything is fine. Let's bring some movement into this, um, yeah, into this um, main melody and we can reach that with some short notes and we have the spiccato and the staccato um, and we even have short section octaves low you can hear the difference immediately so they're a little bit longer and the shorts So here you have like more, like two octaves playing, but they are also useful. I guess we can also make something out of them. But for now, let's take this staccato once. Um, stuff that I played <laughs> and now we can Okay, now we will select the normal menu again, but let's try this one. Make them a little bit louder. We 
can make these two a little bit shorter. Second one a little bit louder. Sounds pretty nice. Let's just copy this. Expression a little bit and we can just uh, hear uh, if you um, do not do anything to the expression it usually is at 127 so this is the maximum um, so we will reduce it to maybe a hundred just for now. For situations like this, I just mute the main brass. Okay, that sounds not too bad. Let's. The last notes are not perfect now. Uh, 
um, we just recorded a little bit of um, automation data here and if I want to have it in my separate sections here I just press that shortcut again that I already explained uh, in my last video and now we have the modulation here and I can just delete it because right here we don't need a lot of automation we want to leave it simple for the moment um, but we can select Okay, as you can hear, it does not make a big difference here if I have like the dynamics completely to the top. So let's leave it like this. And what we can do now is transpose all of these notes one octave higher Just transpose. Maybe just transpose two of the notes a little bit one octave lower. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. like this um, and we can also use these short octaves um, for <laughs> for playing even lower stuck cut uh, lower short strings <laughs> Okay, we of course we need to quantize them. They are not. No, not completely. But. Um, mm, 
they can be pretty pretty much the same so this um, I just want to create something like a rhythmic um, yeah for a rhythmic uh, rhythm <laughs> for the low end um, let's see this a little bit well, let's make both a little bit higher velocity <laughs> maybe let's put some reverb on them turn the expression a little bit down let's see how both of the short strings sound together they are not in time as well they need like 30 let's try 40 I guess 30 was fine. Let's just have uh, one more try to turn the velocity drastically down. What the sound is changing? No, that's not good. Let's turn down the dynamic. Ah, I just, <laughs> I just uh, forgot the minus. So of course we want minus thirty. I was just thinking like, oh my god, this is what are you recording here? Um, they are, <laughs> but now they are good. <laughs> Yes. Oops. Oh, you see, sometimes um, I'm hitting the wrong key on my keyboard, but everything's good. Okay. Yes, maybe we can leave them for the moment. 
Let's see if we can hear a difference right now. Maybe we can even turn these strings a little bit louder. Let's try to uh, bring in a little bit more variation in them. So just every second repetition has the two starting notes like this. make this four parts shorter so that these four parts <laughs> um, have place in here so it stays in the rhythm okay then we can just save our project one more time And now maybe let's create a little beginning for all of this stuff here. Let's do this otherwise. I will uh, just copy uh, those low parts of the percussion to the beginning. the piano here so this was a nice melody don't you think so um, but the idea was pretty good
something like this. Okay, that's pretty nice. Now, hmm, there, of course, there's something missing. For the beginning, I am always a great fan if you have something special, not only like uh, a string chord or a brass chord, something different like a drone or a um, moving uh, pad or something like that but let's just have a short look because there is a lot of stuff in Spitfire Albion 1 for this oh no we have to go here and let's have a look at the drones after the apocalypse. These are not the sounds I'm looking for. Maybe this one? one is pretty good for um, just a no without the deep note let's try this question is where is the perfect starting point for this drone maybe here or even here
start it at the same time. But then we need uh, some pre-delay again, because these drones, they are... Uh, you, they, they just um, develop very slowly, so you always need uh, some pre-delay. is good okay let's name this drone and maybe ah, one one more thing for everyone who does not already know if you just name this track drone and you press enter it does not change the name of the parts that you already have inside. If you press shift and enter, everything in that line will be ha will have the same name. And sometimes it can be helpful that it does not change the name of the uh, different sections like here. So you can you will always know which um, chord you used in here. Okay, so we have the drone. Let's try to add something more. Maybe we can find something in that loop section. Oh my goodness. But now you have also seen the loop section. This is some interesting stuff for some movement in the track. Okay, what else do we have? Whoa, okay, this does not match to our track. Alien beacon. Hmm. Let's just see the different sections. Okay, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. This is developing uh, pretty nice. As you can hear, it starts completely different as it develops. Of course, you can change so many things inside here, um, but for uh, that, we uh, don't have the time unless you want to see a um, 10 hour uh, live composing tutorial. Let's just, there's another one, bell taps even deeper. Okay, something like this is interesting. This one with a second piano note. Yeah, 
yeah, it gives a little bit of uh, additional um, uh, yeah additional movement to the to the track and it makes it interesting if I um, if I'm working on one of my bigger projects I always spend a lot of time and sometimes too much time to just find out the the perfect sample for this and I think in the end for me it pays off because um, it can be pretty annoying to uh, check those hundreds of um, patches but if you found the right one uh, you will definitely uh, realize it but it a little bit louder I think for now we can use this <laughs> I don't want the 99 I want the hundred I, I think uh, some of you will um, know that that uh, <laughs> that stuff if you um, just yeah you, it, it doesn't make a difference probably between 99 and 100 but it looks much better if you are like directly on the 100 okay this is pretty good let's make it a little The, the same thing that I told you before with the um, yeah just with naming the the individual lines if you change the volume like from minus 3.2 he's always making like bigger steps you see like 10 or 5 at least if you press shift here you can make little moves and every single you can point every single um, volume so it's for the fine tuning I always press shift when I move that slider so you can yeah, just make it more fine let's call this loop moving or let's call it moving loop that's better okay and maybe the drone can be a little louder now Okay, now let's go to the percussion because in that situation I would love to have some, um, some transition between those, this little intro and the main part. Unfortunately there are no drum rolls in um, Albion 1 but what we have here in the cymbal section is something like a I don't know if you call it a roll it's like a simple swell yeah that's pretty something like this yeah let's go with this pretty interesting because we almost hit the right point it's always uh, not so easy with the with the rolls or the symbol swells because um, you have to make it just um, what sounds best what 
Sounds great. Just let's see. Okay, for me that sounds already pretty good. We need to be uh, like the the highest peak on four on the fourth bar. Pretty good, but it's too loud. wheel here um, yeah let's nope Duh. let's click on more and we want the modulation CC1 for modulation and just leave the whole thing in Expression not that high. Yeah, that sounds much better and matches better to our track. So now let's put in here the expression. Ask yourself why I'm not only using the um, uh, dynamic uh, selection here and the expression. Um, the reason is sometimes the program just changes something inside the instrument. That I, I have that problem sometimes with Cubase, but if I have it like here, um, it will be saved and remember the instrument note if it hits that point everything will play definitely on that track the only thing that could happen if i press the wrong button sometimes that the read automation switches off but that's just one more click and uh, in the end you can find out uh, easily what changes you have made Okay, now we have a symbol. There are also swells. Let's see if we can combine that swell with our symbol. Whoa. Yeah, these are really low. But maybe something like this. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so this one was not on time. This is a really short one. Maybe we want that one. Let's put it on the maximum. Oh, 
Okay, this is also uh, pretty interesting because somehow <laughs> uh, it matches as well at the fourth bar already. Just let's use this one to check it. One more time, or together with the, th the symbol. Yeah, it's difficult. Okay. Let's try to be not too um, perfect here. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty fine for the transition. But we have to save it immediately because Okay. Oops. Nope. This one. What we can try now is those higher shaker sounds that we tried to create, like this stuff here. We can just copy them and try to find something similar in the XXL percussion because there were some sounds that were a little bit similar no this was not the sound that we are <laughs> looking for okay we need to delete everything down there because we only want this let's see yeah something like this This is good. This sounds pretty good. Is it? Which one is it? Oh, you can see <laughs> we are much too high. E4, nope, still down. Okay, let's see. It's a little bit loud, of course, but together with this. I think that's pretty good. Just let's make it a little bit uh, less volume. Now I can show you one more uh, trick that I often use if I don't want that high frequencies here. I think most of you, yeah, think of course you may EQ it, but I will just use my equalizer from FabFilter Pro and solo this line. And insert a high cut filter here. Something like this. OK, 
Okay, that's uh, how I like it. So if you just listen to this alone, and without the effect, so we just uh, cut off the high frequency that we don't need and together with this one it comes out a pretty nice sound. Yeah, it just gives that extra little punch that we need. Oops. No, please do not delete this. Okay, so we are on a good way. Let's let me just try how it would sound if I use one of this. Just forget it. Um, what we can do now is... Okay, I just realized that this synth pad is still a bit too massive, too loud. is also <laughs> too loud. We just uh, added this and now it's already... pretty good um, you can hear the difference pretty good if it stops here um, there's something something missing uh, right now string part for our second part of the um, of the main part but not I don't want to use the long notes like here maybe we can try to use this mid strings legato let me take them here So as you can hear already in this example, um, I've added no external reverb, but even if the reverb is turned down completely, you can st still hear some reverb. So that's what um, many people uh, who don't like Albion 1, they, they just complain about 
those uh, yeah those that there is so much reverb in the sound but as i told you before i'm a great fan of reverb so um i think the sound concerning the reverb is pretty pretty good and i can work with that pretty pretty good <laughs> automatically uh, use the mod wheel here already so we can again extract the automation let me have just one short look for everyone who's asking which function that is That's it. MIDI functions extract MIDI automation. That's it. I did not find that shortcut on my last video, but now I found it. So everyone who was wondering why did he not explain the shortcut? Now you know. Uh, it's this one. So now we have it here in our automation section okay but we want to start a little bit lower like this this one simple and just mm -hmm. and don't make that many moves just like this going up a little bit and going down again like this and of course let's uh, try to quantize those notes And we have a legato line again, so we definitely have to overlap the endings. Okay, you can hear there's again some pre-delay missing. You can remember those mark with 120 and 125 because there are some libraries, I don't know why, um, especially also in Jaeger, um, 
there's just if you put in a pre-delay with 125 you're often good but of course just uh, trust your ears <laughs> This is sounding pretty good. Let's see. I think it was better before. have to be that strong just um, just to be in the background um, I think that's pretty good Try one thing. I am not satisfied with our beginning, as you may see. Let's see how this may sound. I'm sure we will find something for this part as well. Okay. Some strings are way too loud here. Let's see. Something is way too loud. We cannot hear that clarity of the main melody. I don't know if you know what I hear. If you can hear the same. Just 
realize that we I have one uh, this is a good chance to show you one more thing that I often do I just select like the mid longs we used the chords from the chord uh, menu and I also select the chords here and if I change the color uh, the color of the um, sections to part I can see blue and red and if some notes would not match together you could pretty good see it here um, but what I wanted to do like there is something that is not perfect for me in this part here <laughs> Loud. Let's try this. this is still too loud and my problem with that is I don't like it if you can hear that pad sound in the background like those um, like you can directly hear a chord and another chord and a chord this sounds not uh, professional so we have to turn this down Those two notes don't overlap because otherwise he will not play the second one. the project here okay let's open the chord menu again and bring in a little bit of variation <laughs> It 
sounds okay. Like, let's try this E, F, D minor, and G. And let's bring them um, one part. Just want them to have uh, the same, yeah, the same length, those parts, like. Okay, um, let's also add the low parts here. That's already okay. Let's just check one more thing. The velocity here is like 30 and of the low notes. Maybe we can Turn the low notes a little louder and the high notes a little bit more quiet, just... Sounds pretty good. So let's take the same transition. So we just uh, make it like six bars before we need it. I hope you know what I'm talking about. We need it on 12, so we put it like six bars before. We should turn them on if we want to hear if everything works fine. Okay, now we need something.
something like this and let's um, combine those two parts we don't need them separated so we can have a look in total <laughs> Here we need a little break. Maybe not that long, let's see. Also here a little break. starts earlier okay what we will do now is uh, first of all copy our Darwin ensemble and no before we will change the name so that we don't get confused yes we will copy the Darwin ensemble let's see interesting now you know what I was talking about uh, before now something has changed in our settings yeah um, <laughs> somehow it turned from brass mid to brass low in octaves so to avoid this problem again we need to go down to the key switches and just look which key is for the brass mid okay it's the sis so let's go before the first note from the brass and add this sis So it automatically will be good. Yeah. If anything should happen uh, during the during our work, if we export it and the first note has this key switch button pressed, uh, we will be fine. 
Okay, now we are... Um, Okay, if you're wondering uh, what I'm doing here, I just have some um, uh, some little melody in my head and I try to build it here. <laughs> I don't like this this passage here. the mistake all the time. As you can see, you can spend like half a day just uh, arranging the brass. Um, but the more you do, the more a MIDI controller you um, bring in here, uh, the more realistic it sounds. And now we just uh, changed the length of the notes. Uh, we did not even change the expression. Um, the modulation there's so much more you can have like four or five curves in here um, but I think if you have like a great project and want to be better than in your project before just try to add these little improvements and 
your track will uh, sound better. And if you do this to every instrument track, um, I guess it's it's worth it, but it takes a long time, as you see. Um, but uh, let's leave it for the moment here. I just have to look if we are still recording. Yes, everything is fine. So I want to show you one more trick that I use if you want to make the attack of the note a little bit clearer, you can just copy this legato patch to, let's try the mid short. I will show you what I mean. And not for all, just for the section that comes here. Okay, so what I discovered now, I think the brass has too much reverb here, our main brass. Um, this short articulation, let's hear this alone. And both together. the difference it gives that extra bite at the beginning of the note yeah I think we should leave this here um, but of course you have to arrange the the short brass um, in a way that uh, you, you do not hear that there is a a, um, a short brass that um, that's playing just a short note. So um, I think it's it's pretty nice in the mix here. You just can hear the whole brass a little bit clearer. It starts with more bite. Um, let's see what we have here yeah we can just leave it here but I want this passage let's add this Easter Island patch and see how it sounds <laughs> Passage, we leave it here. Those shaker stuff that we made, we just deleted it. Let's take one note out and see how this sounds. This was the wrong note. Let's try it like this. No, we can leave it inside, but make this a little bit more quiet. Let's see. Okay, now 
there are two too quiet. Too much for the drums. See, it's uh, always like try what sounds best here. I just try to uh, bring in a little bit more variation with the drums, so they uh, it, it all gets a little bit slower here in this part, and then we can come back with the final main part. <laughs> Everything what we did here. So let's go back. No, this was one step too much. Um, and just turn down the volume of that passage here. <laughs> What we did before as well, but I think it is better. low end. Okay, let's make the first notes of this low end Easter Island boom sound <laughs> a little bit lower as well. Okay, this synth pad is too loud here. Ah, you see the problem? We had the velocity here at 22 and here um, it's much louder because we took it from the chord menu. So uh, we can go back here, leave the volume the same and just adjust the velocity of those 
no, it's to the same level as as before so it stays in the same volume yeah <laughs> Okay, but there's still something missing. Let's try to use this drone. Maybe we can use this drone here as well. Or maybe we go, let's do this. Maybe we go down here already. Yeah, that sounds much better. But I'm still thinking we can make this drone a little bit louder. Okay, and what we try now at first we will save our project here. Let's now copy the chords from the synth pad to the long strings. Yes. And let the notes overlap. A little bit again like this let's try those notes not to overlap unless you um, yeah don't want to have any problem to not hear uh, the note um, and then layer the brass with that string section let's just listen to this Let's just solo those two parts. No, sorry. We're like here. I don't like that there's too much in the middle it feels like there are too many uh, notes in the middle so let's make it a little bit thinner okay and now
try to use the string notes and make it a little bit similar to the melody. Okay, the C starts here. Let's start the strings a little bit earlier because they need some time to... Nah, we, we just need to make one unit. That's much easier, yes. But now we have lost the brass. Just see how this sounds. Uh, sorry, this was not the right. Okay, the D starts here. Then let's. Okay, so uh, the last note needs to be longer for the brass as well as for the strings. Let's see how long. too loud. Uh, let me show you one more trick. Um, if you mark everything now, you have marked the brass and the strings. If you click this symbol here, edit active part only, and you have marked the strings, and you make like this, you only have selected the strings. So that means if you push it like here, the brass will um, stay uh, at the same place. So that's uh, pretty helpful. Um, okay, but of course we don't want it like this. But we want uh, to make the strings um, a little bit more quiet. Especially in the lower sections, if that helps a little bit. Okay, and here is a good place to use some new drum set. I thought we have the Piper Toms. Okay, where are the Piper Toms? Oh, that was far too... Yeah, let's just use these two buttons here. Something like this. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay, that sounds not too bad. Yeah, this is how I like it. Okay, let's leave this just as a short addition here. And now, um, yes, we will use this transition again. Yeah, because we don't want to make another one and unfortunately like i said we have no not that big variety of uh, drum rolls but i think we found a a pretty good solution <laughs> Okay, now comes my favorite part. Uh, we have created a, um, a yeah, pretty nice uh, main part that we can almost completely copy now and make it even more powerful and maybe a bit more epic and add some additional stuff. That's what I love. But at first, I don't like this stuff here. <laughs> mm, let's save the project again. And what we could do is try the beginning. I just had an idea to make one of these deep booms at the beginning. Wow, that's such a huge difference. That is perfectly... Somehow it feels like this was the missing part here at the beginning. Okay, but now it comes a little bit too... A quick let's try to start here with the pad where this comes from but the longer you sit on your track the more things you um, realize they don't have the right volume usually you should do a little break uh, if you have feel something like this because now I feel like this higher frequency stuff is too loud
you are sitting out there and thinking, what the hell is he doing now? It was perfect. Could be, but somehow I felt like it was too loud now. Uh, maybe we should leave it for the moment and adjust it in the end. One more note here in the middle. No. Let's see now once again. pretty good that C <laughs> here um, now I think um, just let me we need to make a final adjustment to that higher shaker stuff that we <laughs> created many notes. I don't know why, but somehow I hear it now. Okay, we have to delete both. Ah, switch this one off. Something is wrong now. Maybe these two notes is like this. Yeah, that sounds much better for me at least for the moment. Maybe he changes in a few minutes again and we, <laughs> we will uh, 
make some other adjustments, but no. Let's use this. Yeah, I really like that. So what we are going to do is copy this. Okay. And of course we have to copy both of them now here. Oops. And what happened here? That's not a problem. Cause we did not want these shakers in this part anyway. So it's like ah, now we have them here. That's not good as well. Okay, something went wrong here. Ah, I know what went wrong. We have to cut this here and now we can copy those parts like this. Now let's copy our main part completely to that part at 18 bars and our main part starts here, that's all the main part, the mid strings, the cinematic studio piano, this one, yes, all of this and copy it to 18. Let's just see, yes, we're on the on the line, on the grid, yes. Okay, um, let's hear it. Okay, so that was not on the grid. We want to 17, like this. First of all, we will copy this brass section to the long consort Dino strings and just see how, um, how that sounds. But if we want to copy it, i just show you one more thing. Um, here you can select grid and also relative grid. That means, I just show you, if this would not be on a line and you select relative grid and copy this to, oh no, sorry, you have to select this, <laughs> of course, and you copy it from mid long to the long consorts. It's absolutely at the same level, um, so that's also pretty helpful, but I usually always try to be on grid somewhere, for example here, that's the same. I hope you understand what I, I wanted to tell you. Let's just hear the long consordino alone. Yeah, and let's put the modulation here. And make it at around 
auf. Like coming from here. We will leave it really simple for this here for the moment. Just because I want to make this part a little bit uh, more powerful and we already have such a long stream. I thought we would be faster, but somehow it always takes its, its time. It's almost too quiet. Let's go with this. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. And now let's make it even a little bit longer. And let's see if, uh, yeah. This note uh, is not perfect in this. We could put it down an octave like here. Let's see how this sounds. do is bring in more strings here more spiccato strings we don't we haven't used them at all let's try to make a really fast uh, passage here we have to look now we um, okay let's turn this grid on and let's quantize the ends so we can adjust them all in the same level lower oops or higher even no. 
let's make uh, a little bit like um, a movement from the velocity. So the first note is higher, then comes the second note and it goes slowly down. To, we have like 92, 86 and maybe 80. This a little bit more down the higher range. Okay, that sounds not too bad. Let's put a little reverb on them. Ah, okay, we already have. Yes, okay, let's let's go with them. Now we need the grids. I don't know if that's too high. Da, 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 da. Let's hear it. Now we have already created some movement in those strings here with those uh, developing velocities. We can also add even more uh, by changing the expression and create something like Let's try this to this. Mm. Oops. Maybe a little bit less. Okay. 
Okay. Oops, no, that's not what we wanted. But we can copy this and paste it here, paste it here, paste it here. Yeah, maybe that's not so bad. Let's go with this. Ah. Copy and paste it here. Okay. Okay. And now we can even uh, one more thing that I want to show you. We can copy such fast string um, spiccatos to the short wind section that brings some nice effect. We haven't touched the winds at all. Oh my goodness, we need to do something with the winds here as well. Let's copy this to the high short winds as well. And let's see what the winds alone sound like. Okay, they don't sound like good because <laughs> these are not the high winds that we want. Turn them up a little bit. Mm. Okay, we definitely have to delete our second raw, our second octave, the lower octave, like here. Turn them a little bit. Let's turn them down. Yeah, that's not too bad. Maybe even a bit more. Just try, uh, let's see how both of them sound together. So you can hear the difference. It gives uh, a great effect. I really love that. Let's hear also bring in some expression and see what he did already from okay so let's hear all together now Just let's put it down a little bit here. Especially the highest parts are too loud for me, but let's try it with this. First note, maybe like this. better. 
Um, and of course we can copy this so it repeats yes okay um, let's use another wind and let's use the wind legato the high wind I really like the tone of the winds they are um, even if it's not um, comparable to a professional woodwind library um, they have a beautiful sound and you can also hear the reverb here even um, also if the reverb is um, completely turned down <laughs> but yeah that's Albion one um, I personally like it uh, but everyone has to decide uh, for himself but let's see if we find any any brass melody sorry no brass melody woodwinds Be something like this. Okay, I think I have something in my head for playing the uh, single instrument over the others I, uh, I always uh, make it a little bit louder so it's easier to, to hear for me sequence was pretty nice
press the start. Like this. <laughs> okay, so after a short break I'm back with our project and I made some final adjustments and improvements to the track that I did not record anymore because of the time and the length of today's live composing tutorial already. But I will show you the things that I made. It's just a handful. Um, first of all I deleted all the unused instrument tracks so that we just have our project here. Second, I added some additional piano notes, very soft played, just have a listen. I copied this sequence to the second main part as well. I layered another instance of the mid-strings legato over our main brass just one octave higher coming together in the end uh, just listen to both of them together of that I even layered one instance of the long woodwinds, the long high woodwinds, very soft, hardly to recognize in the mix, but they give a little extra to the mix. Let's hear all uh, together. the woodwinds legato that we played before I left it inside the mix um, yeah that's almost it the only thing that I did as well is I adjusted the volume of all the individual instrument tracks a little bit so that everything sounds a little bit more harmonic and matches better together I hope I could give you a little impression about Albion 1, what you can do with Albion 1. Um, I personally really like the library. Of course it is not comparable to any professional string or woodwinds or brass library, um, but it's an all-in-one solution where you get all those patches combined together and I always find myself using Albion 1 in my bigger projects um, especially the the short strings are really good um, the percussion as well and I also find myself using um, those synth pads those drones everything you you just saw how big um, the patches the amount of patches is so yeah um, i never regretted buying it but of course you cannot compare just the strings of albion one to a professional string um, library uh, but i think that is um, yeah that is absolutely normal Okay, I hope I did not confuse any one of you outside there because today's live composing was a little bit more weird. Yeah, it was not that straightforward from starting with the strings, ending with the percussion. It was like, yeah, just 
I like composing is yeah for me it's exactly like this um, so I think you just saw a another instance of a composition um, what I think that is music composing uh, it's not going from A to B it's like going from A to D to Z and then coming to B um, but in the end uh, the result is um, the most important thing and I'm pretty um, happy with the track, how it turned out, what we composed in this live composing tutorial. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments below, any recommendations. Um, also, please write down if I confused you with, uh, with uh, today's live composing tutorial. Uh, if you have any um, suggestion, uh, suggestions to improve, um, of course, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like it. That would be uh, fantastic. And yeah, see you on the next one. And let's listen to the whole final track one more time. Bye-bye.